I don't feel like we have to manage a large family anymore now that our three oldest are out of the house and on their own. But I still rely on these seven things to make sure that our everyday life runs smoothly and I don't get overwhelmed. Number one, minimalism. Now, if you've found me through the Mega Motivation playlist, and you've probably already heard from some minimalists already about how minimalism makes everything run smoother. It's the ultimate life hack for anybody really, but definitely those with bigger families. Because the more people you have in the house, the more things you have to manage. And minimalism reduces that. So if you want more time, get rid of the non-essentials in your home, in your garage, in your car, on your calendar. Basically, go all in with minimalism and you won't need time saving or time management hacks because managing life will just generally be easier. And I mentioned the Mega Motivation playlist. This video is part of that collab. We have so many wonderful minimalist, decluttering, organizing YouTubers talking about time management this week. So be sure to check out the playlist for that. I'll put a link in the video description below. Number two, set up systems. Math teachers teach formulas. They teach kids this process of how to solve a problem. Now, there may be other ways to get to the answer, but if you follow the teacher's system, their formula, it's tried and true and will get you to the correct answer. So if you follow the formula, there will be fewer times where you have to go back and redo the work. That's what systems do for us. Systems are just a routine, a formula, a process of getting you through the day. And most of us don't realize it, but we already have these systems in place and a lot of times they're completely inefficient. So taking time to look at the systems that we have in place through the day and possibly starting earlier or rearranging the process in some way can save you so much time and energy and headache. So let me just run through real quick all the different systems that we have in place for our family during the day. Early morning. This is when our daughter Naomi has her hygiene routine. So we know exactly what she needs to accomplish with eating breakfast, getting lunch together, showering, all of those things, what she needs to do before she heads out the door to school at 740 in the morning. So Naomi gets up at 615 to go through her morning routine. This means she is out of the bathroom at 630 so other people can use it. And yes, we only have one bathroom, so it is really helpful for us if we schedule showers. So 6.30, we have our before school routine. I go into the kitchen, I pull out all the lunch containers, I set out lunch stuff, start making breakfast. The kids put their lunch together. That goes right into the living room with their backpack, their water bottles, masks, sweaters, whatever they need for the day is sitting by the door ready for them to go. By the time their lunch is done, breakfast will be ready and they can start eating. After breakfast, I do my morning reset. So this varies depending on what we have going in the morning. Sometimes kids have early morning activities and weekends are different, but it's always after breakfast is when I put everything away from breakfast, making lunches, all of that. I wash the dishes, wipe off the counters and stove. That is my basic morning reset. This means that the kitchen is completely reset and when I come back in the evening to cook dinner, it's all ready for me. The next two things I don't actually do consistently anymore because I don't have as many kids to manage, but when they were all at home, I had to have my laundry routine where I would wash, dry, fold a load of laundry every single day. And I would start that in the morning right after I finished washing the dishes. Doing the laundry every day meant that I spent about four minutes a day doing laundry. That was it. That included the loading and unloading and folding. These days with less kids, we do laundry about every other day. Then there's the after school routine. When the kids come home, I have them immediately empty their lunch, put their lunch containers in the sink, throw things away, go through whatever homework or things they have to work on. Masks get washed, backpacks get put away, all of that. This is also a great time to have the kids help. I remember when I had my fifth child and I was overwhelmed with everything that needed to be done. And that happened to be right at the beginning of my minimalist journey. But I reached out to another mom who had a bunch of kids and I asked like, how did you manage? I am completely overwhelmed with all the tasks that need to be done every day. And she kindly said, 
make your kids do it. So when they come home from school, have 15 to 20 minutes where they get to do whatever it is you need them to do. So this is when they would fold their clothes and put them away because the laundry was done now. They might take out the trash, sweep, vacuum, whatever it is going on in the house that really needs attention and they are completely capable of handling it. Just 10 to 15 minutes of other people pitching in can make a huge difference on how overloaded you feel. Then we have our dinner routine. We have dinner at different times based on what's going on during the day. Twice a week we have Taekwondo, so we have to have dinner earlier. On Fridays, Brian works until six, so we have dinner later. But I know that it takes me half hour to 45 minutes to cook dinner. So about 45 minutes before I want to eat, that's when I start my dinner routine, which really is just cooking dinner. Right after dinner, we have our evening reset. We clear the table, someone unloads the dishwasher, someone loads the dishwasher, wipe everything down, get everything put away. Now a lot of my viewers here have commented that it helped them when they specified the kitchen is closed after dinner. So that means nobody can go back in there and cook or make snacks for themselves. After dinner's done, the kitchen's wiped down and it's closed for the night. This helps reduce late night snacking as well as waking up to a mess in the morning. 7.30 p.m., the boys start their hygiene routine. This is where they do their showers, brush their teeth, all of that stuff. I know that I want them in bed by eight o'clock, and I also know that, it, that even though they take a, like a two minute shower, it still takes them a half an hour to complete all of this. So just having them start their routine at 7.30 makes a big difference. And then weekly, on Saturdays, we have our weekly home reset. Saturday morning, we all work together using my weekly home reset checklist. We turn on peppy music, we run around the house, and we have fun doing it. This is the time when the house is completely reset, which alleviates all the energy that I used to spend thinking about how much I need to clean the house. I know when it gets done, and I don't have to think about it anymore. Those are all of my regular systems or routines that we have in place that make my life easier. Being consistent with what time we start an activity means that it gets done consistently as well. And there is not so much running around like crazy trying to find things, get lunches, find shoes, all that stuff because the process itself takes care of it for me. Number three, make time for yourself. I know it seems counterintuitive to take time out to slow down especially when you're here looking for ways to squeeze more time out of your day. But if we take a few minutes to just slow down, take a breath, enjoy some fresh air, let our mind and our body just rest, we're much more productive with the rest of the time we have. This is why so many people talk about getting up before your kids because you can have just a few minutes of quiet before you're bombarded with Hey, can I have? I need. I want. The truth is, we do better when we feel better. So plan out a couple hours every week or 10 minutes every day where you can just go and sit and be by yourself. Sometimes that does mean getting up early. Sometimes that means going and sitting on the porch for a minute after everybody's gone to bed. But giving yourself a few minutes to breathe is really helpful. Number four, have something easy to cook in the fridge or the freezer. It doesn't matter. I cook a lot of real food. This is something that I want for my family. I want to cook from scratch. I want to serve them good, nutritious meals. But life happens. Things come up. There's days that are busy and, and I feel rushed. And even if I have the time to cook, I feel completely frantic. So having something in the fridge or the freezer that I can just heat up and serve means I won't be tempted to drive through or order pizza. And even if it's pre-made, it's still gonna be healthier than those options. I remember when my kids were little and I had a friend who just had a bad day and she was like, I think this is gonna be a cereal for dinner kind of day. And I was like, oh, you can do that? Like it had never occurred to me that that was okay. And from that point on, I gave myself permission to cut corners. Yes, I want to serve my family homemade, cooked from scratch meals, but am I failing if I let them have peanut butter and jelly? No, they're getting fed, that's what's important. Number five, batch cook breakfast. I am not a meal prepper. Just like cleaning, I never wanted to set aside time for cleaning. I never wanted to set aside time for shopping, chopping, stirring, freezing, all of that stuff. I never felt like it saved me much time to pre-chop all my vegetables, so I just didn't see the point in doing it. And I really didn't want to take a full day out to cook so that things were done. 
and because I still get up with the kids and supervise making their lunch and getting their food out and all of that stuff but I do cook breakfast a few times a week so it's easy enough when I make a batch of baked oatmeal to make a big batch so I can cut some up and have leftovers. Same with French toast and pancakes, sausage. I'll cook a double batch and then we can reheat the next day. Number six, communicate and delegate. I would love it if my husband and children anticipated everything I wanted done in the house and had the same clean house desires as I do and just took care of what whatever they saw was needed to be taken care of but they don't. I'm the one that's particular about the state of our house. So I've had to learn to communicate my desires and my expectations to my husband, as well as guiding my children through noticing what's going on and how they can take care of it. This means if my husband is sitting on the couch after dinner, instead of being angry at him for his lack of attentiveness, I can say, hey, I need you to help clear the table. Would you do the dishes tonight? Can you take the trash out right now? It's not that he's unwilling. It's just that those things aren't as important to him. For me, I don't care about cars. I just need them to function and have the things that I want. Like I do want power windows and power door locks, but I don't really care too much about the state of the car. And if my husband said to me, hey, can you clean the car? I would think of vacuuming the inside and, and whatever the inside needs. I would never think of taking it to the car wash. I just wouldn't. I don't care how dirty the car is. I don't care if the paint gets chipped. I don't care if there's rust. It doesn't bother me. I don't even think of that. So I have to acknowledge that we all have our things and his thing is the state of the cars and my thing is the state of the house. And just like if he asked me to go through the car wash, I would be fine driving through the car wash. When I ask him to do the dishes, he's fine doing the dishes. That's what it's like living in a family and communicating with each other. Not always fun, but we're not going to grow, learn, and understand each other unless we communicate about it. Number seven goes right along with this, and that is let go of perfectionism. I know I've talked about this before, but really if we're going to delegate to our family members, we need to not require perfection from them. For me, this has looked like teaching my children how to do a job, and then the next time they go to do the job, I walk away and let them do it. I have to walk away so I don't sit there and nitpick all the different things that they're doing. I want them to do it and they're going to get better as they get older and they get more practice. And it doesn't matter how the dishes are stacked in the dishwasher or on the drying rack. What matters is that they got washed. So many of us have this idea that if I don't have time to do it right, I'm not gonna do it at all. But it's really preventing us from making any kind of progress on our home. Done is better than perfect. There we go, those are the seven hacks that I have depended on to keep our family running smoothly. Be sure to check out this month's Mega Motivation playlist hosted by The Minimal Mom and gain time management tips from all the other awesome YouTubers on the list. This week I have registration open for my Unfuss Your Home boot camp. I open up this boot camp just a couple of times a year. Unfuss Your Home is a serious decluttering boot camp. We work one to three hours a day. I guide you through the process every single day for 30 days. We have a private Facebook group where you can ask me questions and check in for accountability. Registration closes Friday, September 10th and boot camp starts the following Monday. The Unfuss Your Home boot camp will not be open again until January 2022, so if this is, sounds like something you want to do, now is the time to do it. If you want more information, I'll put the link to that in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.